I don't care if I don't have another night out for the rest of my life. And in this video, I'll tell you how I came to that realization. First, let me clarify what exactly I mean by a night out. These are the nights that go past 11 p.m., midnight. These are the nights that end up in busy bars, loud music, lots of people. These are the nights that end up in nightclubs and typically go on till the early hours of the morning. To some people, it might not seem like a big deal, me saying that I never want to go on a night out again, because it's not for everyone. Not everyone enjoys going to places like that and staying out till 4 a.m. But you need to understand that this was previously a religion for me. I first started going to nightclubs at the age of 16 and fake IDs. Then at university, I took it up a notch and it was pretty much every night. Then in my early 20s, when I was working, I'd be going out mostly every weekend, mostly twice a weekend and sometimes during the week. So I have thousands of nights out worth of experience to draw back on. So me saying I'm over them is a big deal. That said, over the past five years, it has been on the decline, the amount of nights out I've been on. Nights out always used to be where I met girls. They used to be where I just let loose and when I had no responsibility, I could afford to be hung over for a full day, sometimes two, sometimes a full week afterwards. And over time, since I've had a girlfriend, now a wife, and since I've had more responsibility with work and since all of my friends don't do it as often, they have been on the decline, but maybe once a month there'd be the potential that a drinking session could escalate into a full-blown night out. I've usually got a trip planned away with friends where we'll go away for a few nights and that's all we'll do is drink. I'm at the age where a lot of my friends are getting married now, so there's bachelor parties to go to, which leads on to when I had this moment of clarity. So I'm talking to you today having literally just got back from a bachelor party or a stag do as we call them in the UK. So we went to Munich, it was one of my good childhood school friends and I went for one night, everyone else stayed for two. So we met at the airport, had a few drinks, I had a coffee, we got all of the awkward Jack's not drinking out of the way and then headed off to Munich. Then the flight's delayed for an hour and a half and everyone's waiting at the gate and then we get on the plane and I'm just thinking, wow, this is a long time between beers. I would be twitching right now if I was everyone else, but funny enough, everyone else seemed all right. So it's interesting to see it from that perspective. But then we get there, we, we go out to a few bars, we go to a beer hall, so these are the ones with the big steins where the, the waiters are coming, holding about 10 of them. And apart from, at one point, the waiter telling me to, to get out because I'm not drinking alcohol, it's all good. It's, it's all fun. And everyone's having a laugh. Everyone's communicating. But that doesn't last. Now, when we get to about 9 o'clock in our third bar, everyone's getting a bit more drunk, everyone's getting a bit louder, some people getting more funny, some people are just getting annoying, everyone's quite pissed off at us to be honest, but this is still, this is still funny, you know, it's still, it's still a good time. Then we move on to the Irish bar, which is more of what I'd class as when the night out begins, and this place is heaving with people, it's absolutely boiling. The music is shit. And at this point, everyone we're with is not speaking to each other in any way. They're not actually interacting. They're just moving around in different parts of, of the club. And this is where I realized that actually, I don't enjoy these scenarios. Everything before that had led up to this moment, I genuinely enjoy. Even with alcohol taken out, 
I was enjoying it. But when we get to these parts, I realised that it's the alcohol that made me enjoy these clubs. And this is also the point of the night where most of the damage is caused in terms of you start necking loads and loads of short drinks and actually consuming more and more alcohol. You st I have conversations with people that I never ever remember at this point. So it was funny to see one of my friends that I always end up having the drunkard heart to heart. At this point, he comes over to me and the emotional conversation starts happening. But this time, I can remember it. I also end up talking to a lot of randomers. So one of my friends brings over a randomer and I just look at him and think, I really don't give a shit about talking to you. But previously, I would have just had an absolutely pointless conversation with him and not remembered it again. So once everything starts getting boring, I duck out and this is about half past 12, go to bed and woken up at 4am when the other person in my room arrives, but that's fine. Wake up the next day, bit tired, but pretty fresh and I leave while they head off to another beer festival. And it's during that walk to the airport that I realise and have that moment of clarity where I'm like, I've done enough nights out for 10 people's lifetimes and it helps with that fear of missing out when it comes to leaving early in those social scenarios where everyone else is going to keep going to night out because you realise that nothing happens after 11 o'clock midnight once a certain amount of alcohol has been consumed. Nothing happens apart from a much more significant hangover. So it's very nice to have that moment of clarity. If I stayed for the duration and was drinking, at this moment in time, I would be on the plane back feeling absolutely horrendous, stinking, and I would probably be out of action or productive action for three days. After my stag do, it took me about a week to recover. And now I'm getting older, it'd probably be the same if I did it this time. But instead, I'm here recording a video. I've played golf and been to the gym this morning. And I'm gonna go into next week feeling absolutely great. So that's a really positive step that I feel like I've taken in my sober journey. But of course, and on the last video, I mentioned how I'd started missing alcohol and it wasn't in those scenarios, those night out scenarios. It was more of the, the social few drinks that I'm missing. And I'm working through that still, but this gives me encouragement of why I should push through these waves and that learnings and progress could happen at any moment. So if you're going through a low point whilst you're taking a break or quitting alcohol, just ride out that wave and get to the other side of it. I promise you it's worth it. Now the next video I'll be doing is the 240 day update and in that I'll be able to talk about my first sober wedding. So I'll see you then and as always, if it's useful to you, if you're finding what I'm talking about useful, I plan to do these every 30 days so that wherever you are on the journey you can sort of pick up where I am and if you are finding that useful just like and subscribe leave some comments let me know what it'd be useful to hear about and I'd appreciate all of that thanks everyone see ya